Fern is on her way to meet historian Imogen Dickens to find out what her four times great-grandfather William Gilmore did next. I'm trying to piece together this intricate puzzle of my four times great-grandfather, William Gilmore. And I know that he had a really successful voyage on the SS Great Britain during the Crimean War, but I don't know what happened after that. So I'm hoping that you can help me with this next leg of the journey. Yeah, so let me show you this poster. So Liverpool and Australian Navigation Company steamed from Liverpool to Australia in under 60 days. Wow, so he's gone back to sea. He's gone back to sea um, aboard a different ship. So it's not the SS Great Britain, but it's the Royal Charter, which is the SS Great Britain sister ship. So it's designed by, by the same shipwright, the same shipbuilder. So including stewards' fees and attendance of an experienced surgeon. So. Wow, so that's part of your service going aboard this ship that you get a very experienced surgeon. Yeah. What I love about this is knowing a little bit more about William now is that um, he's probably not as experienced as, as they might have liked. I'm wondering what's made William want to go back to sea. Either he just liked it, or would this have been a particularly well-paid job to help out his family? Because, you know, he's got a young family who are back in Ireland, and I'm sure they're pretty reticent to, to let him go again. Yeah, the wage would have been good, but it wouldn't have been exceptional. Of course, he would have got to visit loads of really exciting places. A lot of ship surgeons tended to, to go to visit new places. Yeah, they like the adventure. Yeah, maybe bitten by the travel bug. <laughs> yeah, completely. So it's all working out rather nicely for him. Wow. Yeah, well, let me show you this. So Ball's Cottage, Buckingham Row, Aylesbury, April the 25th, 1859. Gentlemen, I beg most respectfully to tender you my resignation of the situation I have held as surgeon of the SSS Royal Charter. I am going to commence the practice of my profession here in Aylesbury. I may succeed and may not. Right, so he's got himself a nice little practice in Aylesbury. Yes, yeah, so he's back on land, he's away from the ship. Right, that's good. So that makes me feel relieved. So he's kind of... He's set up there, he's got his new practice, the wife's happy, his days on the sea were over. That's a relief. <laughs> yeah. Morning. Good, Good, thank you, OK? Fern has come to Aylesbury to visit the house where William set up in private practice. She's meeting historian Elaine Thompson. Hi. I'm Elaine. Welcome to Aylesbury on the mountain. Oh, it's so pretty. William, at this point, is in his 40s. I'm imagining there were far less choppy waters living in Aylesbury with his practice and his family. I think when he came here, that was certainly his expectation. He's moved into a, a beautiful house, and, and it's here that he would have had his private practice, probably this room. Would oh, have been really? Used to actually see the patients, yeah. So they would be coming into a very, you know, a, a nice space to mm. be treated, you know, to see the doctor sitting behind his desk, and it would all, all look very professional and proper. Is there a butt coming? I feel a butt. Well, I think um, things maybe turned out slightly differently to, to how he expected them to be. Right. So, um, if I could just show you this. The Bucks Herald in bankruptcy. It's not a great start. It's not a good start. So, Castle Street, Aylesbury, 150 lots of household furniture, books, medicines, bottles and other effects will be sold by auction by Mr Robert Gibbs on the premises of Mr W. Gilmore, Surgeon, Castle Street, Aylesbury, by order of the Court of Bankruptcy. Oh, that's so sad. No, no, so he's terrible. just selling everything. It's such a shame. Where did it all go wrong, William? Mm. It's tragic. Everything he's worked so hard oh. for is now practically in a yard sale. Um, in Aylesbury, in, in this very house. So I think it must have been very difficult, very shaming. And almost, I guess, it felt for him less chancy setting up here rather than at sea where, you know, sort of trepidation and uncertainty. I think that's what you would assume, that this is a, this is a sort of a safer port, as it were, that he can be with his family and set up in private practice and do well. But I think um, the people who tended to be particularly were the poor and they're oh. of no use to you at all because they can't, they can't pay right. you. 
who you want ideally are uh, the rich middle classes, you know, some rich constipated widows who would c come to you for laxatives or gouty old men who wow. you could look after on a regular basis. Mm. Simply not enough rich constipated women in Aylesbury. Not enough, yeah. And there's another... Oh, William. ..sort of uh, another little bit of detail about the bankruptcy. So this is the Bucks Herald. This is 1865. Uh, the bankruptcy of William Gilmore. The total amount of his debt is about £500. That must have been extortionate. It's about fifty, right. about £50,000. Uh, and he ascribes his failure to the following causes. Insufficiency of income to meet my necessary expenditure and pressure of creditors. My income has been very fluctuating and having a family of seven children by seven, this point. I know. Oh, my God. Goodness, I mean, that pressure is immense. Yeah. So he's scrambling to get himself out of quite a huge problem. Yeah. So, you you know, you really feel for him. He's had an adventurous life. He's had he's a fall done from grace. Best. I mean, he came back a hero at one yeah. point. Um, but he's not a man to um, to let these things grind him down. He doesn't give up, does he? doesn't he? give William. up. He never gives up. Mm. And he moves on. And um, we see him listed in the Lancet, not... Um, see, the, it's just the 1st of, of July there. So this so. is a couple of months after bankruptcy. Yeah, but it's hardly any time has passed. So what's um, William up to now? There he is. So William Gilmore, LRCPED, has been elected medical officer and public vaccinator for District Number 1 of the Ongar Union, Essex. Do you know what the Ongar Union is? No. It's a workhouse. OK. It's maybe not the most fantastic opportunity that it's but seemed it's a job. at first. It's a job. But I think it was the kind of job that you would do when you you couldn't find too much else. Yeah, I yeah. think at this stage in his career, he would probably be very disappointed to end up in there in the union. Yeah. But desperate times. He's not given he's up. He's not in prison, and his family aren't on their own in poverty, so he's he's done all he yeah, could, he I guess, at his responsibilities. Point. I think mm. an impressive man. Mm. It seems terribly sad now, sort of thinking back to William's resignation letter, where there's this one line saying about his move to Ellsbury, it may work out, it may not, and it hasn't, and uh, I'm sure he wasn't particularly expecting that. It's very poignant now, looking back at that. I like that he doesn't give up, though. I like that a lot. No, he's, he's not a quitter, is he? Persistent. Yeah. Yeah, that trait's in our family, for sure. <laughs>